every parent wants the best for their children. But if you said to them, what is that? They probably would struggle to answer. Oh my God, my son got 100 in mathematics. Okay, so what? Vemos a los jóvenes como que en una frontera están como inmersos en el mundo de la tecnología, que es parte de su realidad y que no era parte de nuestra realidad. Children have changed, environment has changed, the world has changed, technology has changed, everything has changed. They really feel that what is happening in the world right now is, is a tilt and somehow their children will not survive. Current childhood is demanding because there are so many influences and the main challenge is how can you become a grown-up in a healthy way. Ich denke, dass immer deutlicher wird, dass in den Spannungen, die wir heute erleben, hier in Europa und in anderen Ländern, dass diese Fähigkeit mit einem gewissen Selbstbewusstsein dem zu begegnen, und sich wandeln zu können, also die Fähigkeit, eine Flexibilität in sich zu haben und Neues zu lernen. A lot of people are beginning to awaken to the reality that the kind of education that their children are going through does not provide them with the tools uh, to be able to feel comfortable in the world. I think it is this increasing disillusionment that is leading more and more parents to look for these different alternatives. And world of education becomes a very interesting alternative. We say, at the beginning, children are like a seed. At the beginning, we need to protect them. Then we open it slowly, then we open it slowly, then we open it slowly, then we open it slowly. Go to the world to do his work, so I think it's possible. So nice to see you! And genau das ist es auch, was meiner Meinung nach auch in der Waldorfpädagogik in der Schule geweckt wird an den Schülern, wirkliches Interesse an der Welt und an den Menschen in der Welt zu wecken. They saw me as not just a brain that could take up the facts, but as a person with an inner life. Um das, was in diesen Kindern lebt, als zukünftiges, und das ist die Zukunft dieser Kinder, das, was in ihnen lebt, dass das auch sein darf. Denn das ist das, was eben Zukunft bilden ist. Und wir nicht sie so formen, dass sie das machen, was wir schon sind. The ability to really see the temperament, the destiny of a child, the way it's planned, this is a tough, tough question to become familiar with. Anna, hey. Within a very short time, when a child joins the world of school, the community where this child comes from can begin to get the sense that there is something special about this child. Now often, they cannot be able to describe what is special about this child, but they can sense there is something special about this child. She came out and she said, Who's this, which school has this girl come from? because she knows what she can do, and she knows what she can do better. Wherever people went, they'd say, I walk into a Waldorf school and I know it's a Waldorf school. It has the same watercolor painting with the blue background and the sun in the sky and the beautiful green tree. How is it that over a hundred years, there could be such ongoing uh, fidelity? To come to this moment now, to see why Waldorf education becomes a, an attractive option, I think we have to go much further back. If you look at the 20th century, first Waldorf school 1919 in Germany, right after the First World War. The end of World War I and Europe Germany was a real mess, nothing worked anymore, people were starving and people were ready to do something new, to try something new. It started as a little thing 
in Germany, in Stuttgart, Waldorf Astoria. And an owner of this factory said, I would love to have a good school for the children of my workers. To open a school which has opened doors for children from all levels of society. Ab der siebten Klasse bin ich auf die Freie Waldorfschule Ullenshöhe in Stuttgart gegangen, also jene Schule, mit der die ganze Waldorfgeschichte begonnen hat. Big shift was 1928 in New York. And then you have the Second World War, Waldorf schools closed by the Nazi government. End of the war, Waldorf schools open and expand. The wall comes down in Berlin. Waldorf schools expand. The Soviet Union opens up in Waldorf schools. Each and every one of those schools was founded by people who said we are looking for something new for their children. A school for those who are really engaged in education, who are really thinking about what can I do for my child so that it will be able to design its own life. Right now, Waldorf Education is international movement. It's a very, very fast-growing movement. There are more than 1,000 schools. There are more than 2,000 kindergartens in nearly 90 countries around the world. This is not a German effect. This is not an American effect. This is a worldwide effect. We now have three there are schools in Thailand, the Philippines, there are schools in Vietnam now. And you have schools in San Francisco, and you have schools in Moscow, and you have schools in South Africa. Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, Israel. We see in Israel that we have plenty of kindergartens because that's the easiest and then all these kindergartens want to become schools there's some projects going on in the west bank also ich bin in einer favela geboren jugendlich gearbeitet hat mit dem waldorf pädagogik como si fuera una explosión de pequeñas escuelas waldorf o jardines por todos lados de la argentina there are four schools in hyderabad three in mumbai one in bangalore one in chennai and the two in Delhi, one in Pune. And there are more all the time, in every different kind of circumstance. I visit a teacher who teaches in a dump in Kosovo. It's called that, the kindergarten on the dump. No beautiful toys, no nice curtains, nothing. They use bottle caps, they use whatever they can find. There is not a single world of school in the world which is pure. You always have to make a compromise. The question is, how far can you go with the compromises in order not to lose your identity? There's no Vatican in the sky. There's no school board. It's a network. It's a loose network. How can this be? It's like the prototype of a grassroots movement. And it has grown to be the biggest and largest pedagogical movement in the world, which is not state-run or run by churches or commercial interests. Es ist eben nicht so, dass Waldorfschule nur so gemacht werden kann, wie wir das in Stuttgart machen, sondern es ist eben heute deutlich, dass Waldorfschule bunt ist, sehr bunt, dass in jeder Kultur man es anders machen kann und dass es jeweils auf die Menschen ankommt wie man das machen möchte, auf die Kultur, auf den, auf den gemeinsamen Zusammenhang. China is, an, is a country with long history, so we had our own oriental wisdom also. But I think what of education really meets or correspond with our old wisdoms quite well. Like Shwaram here, they came the group of people and they said, we want to build this school and a different school, so they did it. And here, here is Waldorf. My dream is to bring this education for Arabs people. We started with four pupils. Now we are a very big school. Islam, 
هذا بخلق محبة ومعرفة للشخص الآخر. World of education has to be adapted in other countries to the cultural basis of these countries, to the images, the colors, even the language. Not to throw all the tradition away, but to look at the tradition and to see how you can enliven in it that it's related to you. Everything that was about India comes back through the world of curriculum into the schools. The young bird would fly, rest, and then fly. We see more and more uh, the motifs that used to exist in the old African society beginning to reemerge again through children who are going into world of schools. In that kind of sense, we would have become a much authentic Chinese than we are right now. connected to this huge um, growth of world of education is the need for a more human education and for more human values in education, a need for an education where you can become oneself. <laughs> Steiner said, fundamentally, all education is self-education. Or den anderen finden, den anderen Menschen finden, heißt auch gleichzeitig mich selbst finden. Und in diesem Rätsel stehen wir eigentlich drin. Islam is describing this in a beautiful way by saying every one of us has some drop of light of Allah in him. So just give space to this light and it will uh, give you light and, and direction. And this is basically all about what we are doing, huh? giving space to this light in everyone. If children can grow up with a deep, deep knowing that our connection to others is the crux of who we are, that that's where we find ourselves, then this world will be okay. The young people that, I, that I've met all over the world who have gone through all of pedagogy are social entrepreneurs. The fundamental thing that they do best is experience belonging. They can make a space for the other. And what we call social sculpting, how could we create new meeting points utilizing these capacities to bring it into economy bring it into governance, bring it into the ecological movement. It sees educating young children in the ways of justice and peace and brotherhood as more important than anything else. I look at this child and I see that this child has a more caring attitude towards other children. I look at this child and I see when this child plays, there's a lot of imagination and a lot of creativity that comes into their play. When it comes to things like sharing, they find it very easy to share. And so I think that, for me, is, is, is really what makes World of Education so beautiful. Yeah. Einerseits innerlich hat sich viel geformt, es sind Strukturen entstanden, Formen. Und zugleich sehen wir, dass diese Pädagogik sich weiterentwickeln will in die Zukunft. Und die Frage ist, wie nimmt man diese Zukunft wahr? Steiner was never about mimicking. You would betray original intent. You have to keep thinking and looking at the child before you. Was sind die Nöte der Zeit? Dieser Frage heraus ist die Schule auch damals gegründet worden. It will have a new stage in the future, I think. We'll be desperately in need of integrated human beings because our society will grow more and more complex. Without these capacities, we'll still be repeating our mistakes that we've um, institutionalized in our culture. We have to think ahead. 
many generations, uh, but the seeds have to be planted now. And that's exactly what Waldorf Education will do, it's just planting the seeds. Something which started at one place is a global impulse now, and which actually sets uh, things free in a wonderful way. And that's what I hope that many, many, many schools, teachers, parents, children can take part in. This is what joins us together. And when we cultivate this feeling life, then we are working even more and more to solidify and crystallize these, these heart forces, which then help these children to actually more and more feel that despite of all the challenges, there is hope for the future. Dass wir uns gegenseitig Aufmerksamkeit schenken, das ist das Zentral des Unterrichts. Und da sehe ich ein ganz großes Entwicklungsfeld. Es war was ganz Kleines, aber eigentlich das Größte. Denn Aufmerksamkeit schenken ist eigentlich Liebe.